Good morning and welcome. I'm so glad that you are joining us this morning on August the 16th for this time of worship. At the time of the recording, it's uh, rather hot here in the sanctuary. It's been a very, very warm day in the mid-90s, and it's still warm here, so I hope you don't mind that I dress down just a little bit to stay kind of cool. We've got a great service in store for you as we welcome you. Let's begin. Though we are apart from one another, we nonetheless gather together in heart, mind, and spirit to worship our awesome God, eternal God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Be present with us in this time of worship. Receive our prayers and praises, and let your glory shine on us, your love surround us, your power fill us, and your grace free us. Amen. Our call to worship is from Psalm 19. The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of His hands. Day after day, they pour forth speech. Night after night, they reveal knowledge.
Let us pray. O Lord our God, we acknowledge your great goodness toward us, praise you for your mercy, thank you for your tender loving kindnesses that are new every morning, and revere you as the God of our salvation and the sovereign Lord over all things. We also praise you for your steadfast love and thank you for pardoning our sin, empower us by your Holy Spirit to live a life of obedience to your word and Christ-like service that brings you fame and glory. Amen. The good news to you and the whole world is this. God's Son, Jesus Christ, died for your sins and the sins of the whole world Through the shedding of His blood on the cross, He has redeemed you, made you His beloved children, and by the power of His resurrection, He guarantees to all who believe in Him abundant life now and eternal life in heaven to come. We believe and receive these treasures as gifts of His grace, for God is good and His mercy endures forever. These words of Scripture praise from Psalm 104. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God while I have being. I shall sing of your strength. Yes, I shall joyfully sing of your loving kindnesses in the morning. For you have been my stronghold and a refuge in my day of distress. You are my fortress, my God, on whom I rely. of my God and King, the triumphs of His grace.
face I see the splendid beauty of the sun, the one who died for me. We die for us, church. Believe it tonight. Come on, let's sing together. Hallelujah. Our first reading is Psalm 46, verses 1 to 10. Through these words, God would have us believe that he is always there to help, providing refuge, security, and peace. His power is complete, and his ultimate victory is certain. He will not fail to rescue those who love him. God is our refuge and strength a very present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth give way, though the mountains be moved into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble at its swelling. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God will heap her, help her when morning dawns. The nations rage, the kingdoms totter. He utters his voice, the earth melts. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come, behold the works of the Lord, how he has brought desolations on the earth. He makes wars cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the chariots with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel, according to St. John, the 17th chapter. It is known as the high priestly prayer of Jesus. In it, he prays for himself, his disciples, and us. When Jesus had spoken these words, he lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, The hour has come. Glorify your Son, that the Son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all flesh, to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God, 
and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth, having accomplished the work you gave me to do. And now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had with you before the world existed. I have manifested your name to the people whom you gave me out of the world. Yours they were, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything that you have given me is from you. For I have given them the words that you gave me, and they have received them and have come to know the truth that I have come from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am praying for them. I'm not praying for the world, but for those whom you have given me, for they are yours. Holy Father, keep them in your name, which you have given me, that they may be one, even as we are one. While I was with them, I kept them in your name, which you have given me. I have guarded them, and not one of them has been lost except the son of destruction, that the scriptures might be fulfilled. I do not ask that you take them out of the world, but that you keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sake I consecrate myself, that they also may be sanctified in truth. I do not ask for these only, but also for those who will believe in me through their word, that they may also be one just as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. The glory that you have given me, I have given to them, that they may be one even as we are one, I in them and you in me, that they may become perfectly one, so that the world may know that you sent me and loved them even as you loved me. Father, I desire that they also whom you have given me may be with me where I am to see my glory that you have given me because you loved me before the foundation of the world. O righteous Father, even though the world does not know you, I know you, and these know that you have sent me. I made known to them your name, and I will continue to make it known that the love with which you have loved me, may be in them, and I in them. This is the gospel of the Lord. All thanks and praise, honor and glory be to God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the St. Mark's Kids Chat. We have some special guests with us again today. Our cousins Lucy and Mason are here with us. Hooray! Yeah. Hey, Mason. Okay, so today um, in Sunday school, you guys are going to learn about trusting God no matter what happens in life. So let me ask you something. Is there weird stuff going on in our lives right around now? Is yes. there coronavirus and all yeah. these things that are just kind of strange and foreign and all that? So um, in Sunday school, we're, our lesson comes to us from Jeremiah chapter 29, verses 4 through 14. And it's actually a letter um, in the Bible that was written by Jeremiah, who was a prophet. And what is a prophet? Remind us, you guys remember? Someone that obeys God and sends like... Messages. messages yeah yeah exactly it's someone it's someone um, that sends messages from God to um, the rest of the people so that's what a prophet does is they they um, take information and they're kind of passing it along to everybody else so they they kind of have a special relationship with God so he wrote a letter to the Jews who were in exile so what does exile mean what do you guys think no nope. heard of that word it's kind of an interesting word exile means people that you're who don't obey God uh, they were well. Some of them weren't. Some of them weren't um, at that time. 
Um, but in, if you're in exile, it means that you're leaving your home. Because guess what happened? So the Jews were living in Judah, but the Babylonians, they came in and they captured them. So I have a map to show you guys right here. Um, this map, I'm going to hold it up so that you guys can see it, and then we'll show it to our friends at home. So this map right here shows how they went from Judah all the way to Babylon, okay? I'll hold it up here. So that red line shows how the Jews were in exile, meaning they were leaving their home, and they were going from Judah all the way to, the, to Babylon because the Babylonians had captured them. So, um, but you know what? What was interesting is that in this letter, in this letter that Jeremiah wrote to um, the Jews, he had some very specific instructions. So in this letter, he said a few things. He said, number one, I want you to settle in. I want you to work for the good of the country that you are being um, cap held in captivity of. And I want you to have children. I want you to stay there for 70 years. I want you to have peace and prosperity. And I also don't want you to listen to false prophets. Those are a lot of instructions. So I'm gonna ask you something. How would you feel if you were captured and brought to a foreign country and this prophet came and told you that you'd have to stay there for 70 years? How would you feel? I'd faint. You'd faint. What would you, how would you guys feel? Would you be happy? No. Would you know? Because if you're there for 70 years, do you think that's almost your entire life? Yeah. It would be really close, right? So that's a really, really long time. And there was these other um, false prophets who were saying, oh, we're only going to be here a short time. Don't worry. Um, but Jeremiah said, no, the Lord has plans for you, and I want you to be listening to him. So um, it, would be, it would be really kind of hard to, to listen to that, right? So there was another verse that I want to show you guys here um, that says this. I'm going to hold it up here, and then we'll, I'll read it, and you guys can look at it. It says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. That's from Jeremiah 29, 11. Oh, no. So given that, given this verse that we're, that we're hearing, do you guys, does that, how does that make you feel in terms of like waiting around for 70 years? What do you think? Does this give you like a sense of hope that God has something on the horizon? Yes. He does, right? So let me ask you this. Um, it, yeah, how, how would you, why do you think they were there for 70 years, first of all? Why do you think that God chose 70 years? What do you think? No clue. It's, no clue. It's kind of a long time, right? Mm -hmm. So we don't know exactly the reason why, but... There's a theory that it's the possibility that an entire generation of sinful people had to live and die before they would bring the rest of the people back home to their homeland. So, um, but we don't know. We don't know for sure. Um, but we do know that there's another verse that is hopeful and gives us hope in this time of waiting of 70 years. So I'm going to hold it up here so that they can see it too. It's, um, it says, you will seek me and find me whenever you seek me with all of your heart. Jeremiah 29:13, And it also says after that in verse 14, it says that um, I will bring you out of captivity if you seek me. Okay, so what does seeking mean? Now let me ask you guys that. What is seeking God? What do you do in order to seek God? Believe in him. Believe in him? Perfect. Yeah, what else? What else? What else would you do, Sawyer? What else would you do? Nathan, what do you think? What would you do to seek God? Obey him. How do you? Yeah, what were you saying? Read the Bible. Read the Bible. Exactly. You would want to read the Bible. So it's really important for us to be Smart. reading the Bible, right? So because God's words and instructions for our lives are in this book, the Bible, right? So let me ask you something. Do you guys think that we always know? Uh, do we do we always understand what God is doing if He asks us to do something? No. Nope. No. Let's let's do a demonstration about that. Okay, I'm going to bring the camera down just a little bit. Okay, are you guys all in there? I want to make sure I'm I can here. see all of your faces. Okay, so come on in here, Mason. So I have a I have um, written a message, and it's in invisible. Can you see anything on this paper? No. Is there anything written on here? I've actually written something on here. 
and there's a message. Go ahead and have a seat. If you hold it up to the light, you can see it. I know, but there's, let me show you what we did. So what I did is I took, um, a few minutes ago, before, I, before you guys came in here, I took some baking soda, which is like right here, soda! baking soda, and I put um, some water in here, and I stirred it around, and I wrote a little message on this paper, okay? So now what I'm going to do is I am going to have you guys reveal the message that is written here. Reveal so like, like we said, we like just like the... Um, the, the Jews who were in exile, right? Did they understand why God was asking them to do that? Was it kind of invisible to them? They didn't understand why they had to wait for 70 whole years, right? Yes, so, years. But the way that we can reveal and understand what God is asking us to do is by trusting in him. So here's what I'm going to have you guys do is I'm going to have you, hold on just one sec. I'm going to flip this over and then I'm going to have all of you guys kind of Take a very small amount of, um, this is just grape juice, if you grape want to stick your, oh. stick your thing in there. Is it edible? And then I want you to do a little bit of painting, very light painting. Don't get a whole lot of it on there, I but can paint the whole thing. Already, so okay, go ahead, and, go ahead and paint it on. Yeah. Paint it on. So do a, almost cover the whole paper, cover the whole paper. I know what it says. Yeah, keep going. All write it, write it, write it all on there so that everybody at home can see. Okay. So, what are you guys seeing? What it, what message is coming through? Trust, Trust God. God. Trust God. Okay, go ahead and set your brushes down for a minute. Can I drink that? No, thank you. Darn it. Okay. So, um, so let's hold this up so everybody else at home can kind of see it. It's a little bit wet, but you can see that it says trust god right Can I so do out? we so do we always you know the grape juice is sort of representing the things that we do to seek god right to be able to understand and trust what he's asking us to do so we're reading the bible we're praying we're confessing our sin right and the, those kinds of things are going to reveal god's guidance to us no matter what happens in our life right so can we, you know, do you think it was kind of hard for them to trust God in those 70 years? Mm -hmm. it, took a, it took a lot for them to trust God. But we know that God's character is kind and loving and true, and he wants the best for us. So he knows, we know that we can trust God, okay? Mm -hmm. So no matter what, and he was going to bring all of those Jews out of captivity, right? And the captivity that we are in right now is what? What are we in captivity? Well, <laughs> yes, COVID too, but we are in the captivity of our own sin, right? Mm -hmm. So he will release us from that captivity of sin by being able to trust God and, and believe COVID. in Jesus, okay? Mm -hmm. All right, so have a great day, everybody, and we will see you soon. Bye-bye.
grace to you and peace from God the Father and His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I would like to read again a portion of the Gospel lesson from chapter 17 of the Gospel of St. John. Jesus lifted up His eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, that the Son may glorify you, since you have given Him authority over all flesh to give eternal life to all whom you have given Him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you and the only, the only true God and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. On Jesus' last night with His disciples, just before he went to the cross, he tied up uh, several loose ends. He shared a meal. Uh, we call it the Last Supper, of course. He washed the disciples' feet, giving them an example of how they should live a life of serving others, just like he did. He gave his disciples a new commandment to live by, that they should love one another with the same intentional and unconditional love with which he loved him. And he answered their questions concerning his imminent departure. After all that, with his disciples listening in, Jesus prayed for himself, for his disciples, and for all believers in all generations. Jesus prayed the prayer that was read as our gospel lesson for the day. And when he finished praying, he looked at the disciples and he took them up to the Garden of Gethsemane where he would pray additional supplications for what was coming. Their time in the garden, by the way, as well as the hours that would follow, would prove to be a time of great tension and turmoil, confusion and fear for them. And so that night, even at the supper table, Jesus sensed his disciples' anxiety, their confusion about what was coming, their fear. Uh, he told them that he would be leaving them and would be returning to heaven from whence he'd come. He wanted to reassure them that even though they wouldn't see him with their own human eyes and eyesight, nor feel the physical touch of his healing and helping hand on them, that he would nonetheless always be there to support them, that they would never be alone, that he would protect them, and that they would always be valued and loved. It was a powerful moment, and Jesus wasn't just praying for his followers way back then, he was also praying for us today. Verse 20 states clearly that Jesus was also praying for us the night. He said to his Father, I do not ask for these only, but also for those who will believe in me through their word, that they may all be one. In his prayer, we gather valuable insights about his priorities. What is it that Jesus is praying about for you right now? Well, Jesus prayed that his people back then, and as well as right now, including you and me, would remain faithful to God and would rely on the Holy Spirit to bring to mind his words and to lead us into all truth. Now, I believe that the truth Jesus is referencing here is what God says to us about Himself in the Scriptures, about who He is and how He deals with us in relationship with Him. So this has to do with how He presents Himself as the God who created us, preserves us, and keeps us His own. He treats us with mercy, kindness, and love. He does not treat us as our sins deserve. He has compassion on us. 
He pledges himself to care for us and watch over us like a good shepherd and meet our every need. He considers us his beloved children whom he values as priceless and for whom he would spare nothing in order to make and keep us as such. So Jesus is praying for us that these truths will be confirmed in our faith so indelibly by the Holy Spirit that we will cling to him and depend upon him and follow him and trust in him wholly. Jesus also prayed that his church would display the kind of unity that he displays and shares with his Father. We see that in verse 21. It is a unity anchored in unwavering and in inviolable love. It's a love that they share in their relationship as father and son, as part of the triune God. In love, God created all people in His image. They are His workmanship and His masterpieces. And he cherishes each man and woman and child in the whole world and wants each to experience the fullness of his love. In love, God sent his Son in order to redeem every man, woman, and child from our fallen condition, our sinfulness, our corruption, and waywardness. Driven by love for us, Christ gave up his life on a cross, taking all that sin and all that we think and say and do that is contrary to his perfect love and goodness. And Jesus took that all into himself along with the blame, and he suffered the consequences of it, dying. And so out of love, he turns aside the judgment of God and declares us to be the apple of his eye and the target of his affection. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, the scripture says. And God shows his love for us in that while we were sinners, Christ died for us. Truly, this is God's love on display toward us. And so Jesus in his prayer that we have in front of us, prays that we will have that kind of love for one another. He prays that that kind of inviolable affection will be something that we will share, um, the kind that is shared between him and the Father, but also the kind that he shares with us, and also that that would be the kind of love that we would share with everyone else and on every level. You see, there can be no judgmentalism, no prejudice, no racism, no bigotry, no marginalization, no injustice when God's perfect love drives us and unites us in order that we would love one another in this way. In his prayer, Jesus asked God, also to protect his people on their journey through life. In verse 15, Jesus prays, I do not ask that you would take them out of the world, but that you would keep them from the evil one. Last week, my wife Mary journeyed on an adventure to visit our kids and grandkids down in Southern California. It's been a long time since she has driven that 465 miles down to Santa Ana by herself. So there was just a a, a bit of mild concern about how she would fare during that long drive down there over those eight hours. She made the trip without incident, and uh, it wasn't overly challenging or a burden to her at all. It turned out to be very, very enjoyable, but she'll tell you that uh, she had a handful of you women out there praying for her when she was traveling back and forth by herself, that she would stay alert, that she would stay safe, 
that uh, she would not be confronted by any problems that she could not easily manage. And everything worked out wonderfully well, and she's so glad and grateful. See, Jesus does that same kind of praying for you and for me. He prays that no matter what might come, we would be safe. Challenges and trials and persecution and suffering, yes, they are part of all of our life experiences as we travel and journey the road of life. But He is praying. He is praying for you and He's praying for me that we be kept from adverse and deadly effects of things like viruses, illnesses, diseases. He's praying that we would trust that we will make it through the storms of things like a COVID-battered environment that we're all facing right now. He's praying that you and me would have all things working together for our good and according to His perfect plan for each of our lives. He's praying that even in the middle of the raging storm, that we will trust Him to calm that storm, to keep us safe, and to get us through to the other side and the place where He wants us to be. In John chapter 11, in the account of Jesus uh, rescuing Lazarus from death and the grave, we hear Him speak these words. Then Jesus looked up to heaven and said, Father, Thank you for hearing me. You always hear me. But I said it out loud for the sake of these people standing here so that they will believe you sent me. I love that. And most importantly in that little verse, I hear God telling us that the Father hears Jesus. That mean he, means he also receives what Jesus asks for. And Jesus said, you hear me always. And Jesus prays for your protection. And he prays for mine. And he's heard by the Father in that regard. Always. Did you hear the part of the prayer of Jesus where he prayed that you would finally be with him? In heaven? That's a really cool idea, by the way. It might startle you just a little bit to know that he's praying that you'd be with him in heaven. Listen to verse 24 of the text. Father, Jesus prayed, I desire that they also, whom you have given me, may be with me where I am. To see my glory that you have given me because you love me before the foundation of the world. Think of that. Jesus is praying for us that we come to be with him in heaven where we will see and experience the glorious riches and wealth and blessings that he possesses. He is praying that we will come and enjoy the perfect, exquisite, Beautiful, magnificent, wonderful, excellent, marvelous, unequaled by no other life that He waits to give to us as a gift. He prays that we will come and live forever by the power of His unlimited power that He used raising Himself from the dead in order to live forever. All I got to say is, wow! Wow, there's that old joke about the preacher who goes into a bar and he says, Hey, anybody here want to go to heaven? Stand up. Well, everybody in the whole place stood up except for one guy who was over in the corner. And the preacher looked at him and said, Hey, son, don't you want to go to heaven when you die? And the guy in the corner said, Oh, when I die? Sure. I thought you were taking a load up right now. Well, the glory that Jesus is praying to come to us that we will enjoy with Him is so stupendously wonderful. If I had a ticket on the next load, I'll just tell you, I'm good with that. 
I'm ready. I'd love to go. There's just one more part of Jesus' prayer that I want to take a look at with you as I wrap up this message. It is his prayer request in verse 18, 19, and 20, where he says, Father, as you sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sake, I consecrate myself, that they also may be sanctified in the truth. I do not ask for these only, but also for those who will believe in me through their words. What I hear Jesus praying about in those last final words is that we would share with everyone in the world around us, starting with the members of our own families, continuing on with the members of our church and our body of Christ that we fellowship with here at St. Mark, Our neighbors who live next door to us, the people that we live with, work with, and play with, and go to school with, and uh, even those people who are very, very far away will figure out a way that we will share these things in order that they too trust the Holy Spirit to confirm faith in them about God. And remember... Uh, What I said about that beginning, uh, about uh, God revealing himself to us, about who he is and knowing him. God presents himself as the God who created us, preserves us, and keeps us his own. He treats us with mercy, kindness, and love. He does not treat us as our sins deserve. He has compassion on us. He pledges himself to care for us and watch over us like a good shepherd, and meet our every need. He considers us his beloved children, whom he values as priceless, and for whom he would spare nothing in order to make and keep us as his very own. And Christ is praying for us to trust God that we would have extraordinary love like his, so that we would not only be protected and live forever, but that we would go out into the world and share these truths and pray for people the way Jesus prays for us. Because we've been sent into the world. We've been sent to those folks who need to hear these things and receive these things so desperately, just like we did at one time. So you see the purpose, the great purpose of our lives is to then be like Jesus and share these truths about God with everyone we possibly can and pray those kinds of prayers for all people. He prays that we will so that God's love may rest fully on all of them and that Christ would live in them just as he does in us. May God answer that prayer of Jesus for you, for me, for us all, mightily. Amen. And may the peace of God, which surpasses our human understanding, keep our hearts and minds in faith in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen. Let us now join together our voices in the ancient creed, the statement of faith in God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, uh, that creed that is called the Apostles. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. 
Amen. Let us pray. Abba Father, you are our shepherd, the one who knows us and loves us, the one who stays with us and takes care of us. We know that we won't lack any good thing today or any day, for you are good all the time. Lead us to the places where our souls can find rest and strength in your word, with your people and in those quiet moments when we pause and pray. Lead us in paths of righteousness, where truth flourishes and love thrives, where hearts are built up and not destroyed, where wandering souls are finally found and made whole. Lead us for your name's sake, so that we may truly reflect the nature of you, our shepherd, and your goodness, strength, and honor, your love, justice, and mercy, and your tender care for those in need. Though we walk through life's darkest passages, through frightening times, and a future of uncertainties, may we find in you our refuge, our healing, our wholeness. Guard and watch over us, And use your rod of protection 
to defend us. Keep us and pull us away from all that would harm us with your staff of rescue and release us from all the fear in your presence. Abundantly provide for us health, good government, safety, and peace. And though our enemies surround us, give us confidence and faith that because it is your banquet table you have been that we have been seated at, that we dine at the table of your blessing and provision and power. May your goodness and abundant love be our companions through all the days of our life, and stay close to us that we may dwell in your presence here and now until at last we dwell with you in your house forever. Lord, you are our good shepherd Our cup of gratitude overflows. We praise you. We praise you for your faithful love, which endures forever. Amen. And now, according to his promise, and as he has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Go now, in the goodness of God, the strength of Christ, and the peace of the Holy Spirit. May Christ himself be the source of your hope, the light for your path, the guide for your future, and the reason for your living. Amen. God is good all the time, and all the time, God is good. I believe in the sun I believe in the risen one I believe I've overcome By the power of His blood sin and shame I heard mercy call my name He rolled the stone Because he
心。